father, brothers, all my dear friends. I extend a warm welcome to you all. It is a great privilege to see you all here in good number. And here, delighted to have you and meet amidst us. Especially our brothers of first year privileges are going to stage there was a high, a precious soul from the Indian Ocean. We invite you to sit back, relax, and watch the play. Invocation, the prayer at this hour. And we say, here we go, there was a high, a precious soul from the Indian Ocean.
Hari. Today in the class, my teacher asked us a question. What was it? Who is the first Indian martyr? I was not able to answer. I was a bit confused. It is very easy. He is none other than Martyr Deva Sahaya. But I don't know more about him. I will tell you, Deva Sahaya is the first Indian declared as a martyr for the shedding of his blood for Jesus Christ on Indian soil. He is the first married lay person in India to be included in the list of the saints and the first saint from the state of Tamil Nadu. My dear, why don't you tell the children about his early life and faith journey? Oh, it's a long story. I will narrate it to you as much I know and can. I am sure your mom will help me to narrate it better. Please, mommy, please, daddy, tell us more about his sin. It all happened in the early 18th century in the reign of King Matanda Bharma. In the year 1712 or 23rd day of April, to the couple, living in the small village pocket known as Nakchalam, which was formerly the part of Flavankar and Kliyur Kanu. Presently in Kanyakumari, Tamil Nadu. Now you get the geography? Yes, yes daddy. daddy. It's the southern part of India. Hmm. Well, it is history, but very interesting. The couple, Vasudevan Namputmi and Deva Hiyamma, had the boy child named Nila Kandan. Mind you, both parents were hailing from the traditional families. Father of Dinu was from a province and was a immigrant from the present region of Polam district in Kerala. Mother was of Nayantas and the daughter of Ramanpillai of Natchalam. They were following matrilinear lineage. So, Nilakandan also was considered of the Nayantas. It was the considered of the high caste. Very interesting story time. And then Daddy, I believe he was very good in studies. Here and was learning under the guidance of his parents. Truly, God was guiding him to grow in knowledge and wisdom. Vasudeva, Vasudeva.
every day my wife remembers I want to visit your place. How is that, little one? Are you starting to talk? A little one. He's growing smart. Little naughty too. He's trying to grow and make some movements. Now, with my family and kids, I'm coming to know the feel of the family. What to say, my brother? <laughs> yes, everybody. Mary and constructing a new house in order to add stuff. You got it. You're right there. And My brother Vasudevan, today's generation is not like ours. We parents find it so hard to bring them, let alone our children. Searching a good bride with eyes, hard eyes, searching the spring of water. The ledger. Yes, yes, you are truly getting wiser. You have said the right thing. You are worried so much. And both of you, you have my young brain left you. By the way, have you thought about his marriage? Don't you see your son is growing like a bamboo song of a song? Yes, our son has not only grown strong and taller, but growing also in age too. We are proud of him. He has acquired a proficiency in various qualities. However, and how? Whoever does marry him, I believe, will be very fortunate. I should say. By the way, I know a beautiful, gentle, and homely girl. She belongs to our own traditional Brahmin family. Right to in our city. If you both agree, then I can take a step ahead to know more about the family. Why not? If the girl is from our class, then Absolutely. Take the message. Well, where is your multi talented son, Dina Kanda? He has gone for the fencing competition as annual in the village. You see, like every year, this year also, the best swordsman step will go to your mature Look, Anand is from my son.
whatever might be, you both decide what you decide. I am not obey it. The real going the whole world. All can read, my son. Your in archery. Brahma Sastra is a study of their religion and the use of weapons of war. Weapons of war? Did he join for war? My son, wait! Wait! Hold your breath! He started his career as a soldier. Later on, he was chosen as an official in the Nilakanda Swami temple at Padmanabha Puram. Mommy, that is said, Nilakanda was born in 1712 and met in Kanyakumari history. And his mother's name was Devakiyama and father's name was Vasudevanam Putri. How did he get all this detail? I am so proud of you, my daughter, for this curious and nice question. You know, one of the allegations about the great man is that not sufficient historical sources. On the contrary, there are lots of loads of documents and books from 1751, one year before the death of the saint till today. So many dramas and stories to narrate and to authenticate the life and the events that tell so loudly about this man, Ilakanda, then the last time. That includes his administration, wars for during those days.
state of our kingdom. Your Majesty, by your grace, the kingdom is moving towards the progress. Various plans made by you are benefiting your people. But there are also some negative impacts taking place in our neighborhood. The threats, the threats, my king, the threats from the government and the move to encroach the borders of our kingdom, which is hindering the progress of your profitable plans. Minister, what do you mean by say it clear? Express it now. Your Majesty, bordering people are very sad due to the encroachment happening in the borders. What? Threats? And in my state? Till now, powerful nations like Pandya, Nithya, Palasa, and the great Kashti Empire, which had the gun could not stand before me. That who such traitors? Why such treachery and robbery? I'm sorry, Your Majesty. We are lucky. The skilled and hardworking officers in our court. The entire border security system is corrupt and messy. They are ruining our kingdom. It is disgusting. It is hard to believe. How can I expand my kingdom with such unskilled electorates? A lazy person in the cabinet? Your Majesty, we can't even imagine bringing in new minister all of a sudden. If he do so, it falls against you. We need to have thorough talent search in your kingdom. Minister, when the decision is in the interest of the king and the empire, it is for the good of my estate and for my people. I don't care any of the consequences. If the people appointed are not faithful, then how can an empire grow up? Therefore, such new officers and appoint them immediately and catch all the corrupt and insincere persons. Let them be thoroughly punished. <laughs> yes, Your Excellency. Here I go to Kama and at your service. Yeah, that of building a palace. 
in Padmanabha Abhira? Your Highness, it is in process. Give me some more time, Your Excellency. Be a little. Just complete the task which has been assigned to you. Your Majesty, if you permit me, I have something to say. I am familiar with some skilled and hardworking people. A few are from Tarun among them also a few from Lamputri branch. If you wish, you can select officers from them. Minister and courtiers. You take care of the task assigned to you. Each one to your own post, to your own department. You leave the appointing of the officers to me. May you live long, my king. The work was entrusted to you, but sorry, you could not complete it. So, this is the sad state. Well, now you, whose milk teeth have not even broken, you teach us about the abilities, empire, and best kingdom. You should not forget that it was not built in a single day. The hard work, the dedication, the shrewdness. Burn the food. The last hundred years from experience is the result we have and has reached at this stage. <coughs> Let my king not be angry with me. And you, minister, discretion, knowledge, and ability. Do not come by it, but it is achieved. It is the wish, whether to attain it in youth or in old age. Maybe I have acquired it in my youth. Your Majesty, it's the great answer to test my will. We have been humiliated by this young man, the minister. In this meeting, no! It is enough for both of you. Now, will someone tell me something about appointing the officers? Your Excellency. One of those skilled people yeah. I am well acquainted with is Nilakanda. Your Excellency, Nilakanda is a resident of Patna who has mastered the various arts of warfare. He is famous in the entire state of Travancore for his unique sword fighting and archery. Apart from this, he is also proficient in various languages like English, Hindi, Tamil, and Malayalam. Nilakanda has also gained proficiency in philosophy, architecture, and astrology. Minister, if you request for praise of that great man Nilakanda is over, then Will you bring him to us, so that we too may be blessed to have his great sight? Since we are going on praising him, let us acknowledge how great he is in languages, arts and Vedas. Yeah, I do look forward to meet him. Your Majesty, the great man we are talking about is here. 
He is waiting outside, seeking for your permission to get him to the royal court. Shall I seek your order to let him in? Soldier, let the young man enter it. At your command, your majesty. Let my king live, your majesty. It is not appropriate to present in the appointment of the new officers in this land. Please, calm down. Are you Nilananda? Your Excellency, I am Nilakanda, hailing from the region of Travancore. It has been a great pleasure to have heard a lot about you. That of your prudence, diligence, your martial arts, and bravery. Therefore, I am pleased to appoint you as the chief officer of my court with immediate effect. Have you anything to say about my new decision? <laughs> it is my great fortune, Your Excellency, that you have found me and unworthy as worthy in your court for this service. Very good. Ministers, I appoint Nilakanda as the chief officer of our court. And we entrust the work of building the palace in Patmanabhapuram. The work which we entrusted to with your song. Minister, please take it and help him out to take charge of his new office. Let your command be done, Your Excellency. Long live our mighty, valiant, powerful king. King happy to appoint him in the court and a minister to hand over his position? Hmm, my son, orders are orders. That too of the king's orders. Nobody can disobey. He commanded that Nilakanda be taken to the place of construction of the temple. King ordered today onwards. The king orders were carried out by the minister and Nilakanda. Mummy, then all people must have been respecting Nilakanda for the great war. Your daddy once narrated to me the story of Nilakanda. He was saying that Nilakanda was a palace official, was working for the king's treasury. On that job, later, he came to Udaikiri Court as the paymaster to the construction laborers of the court. At the age of 27, he got married to a beautiful girl of his son. 
Bhargavi Amal, of the village of Nepal. And he was saying that they were leading a very happy married life. Hey, why don't you tell the children the full story? Yes, he was happily married. He was also an able statesman and a responsible person. Carried out any job given to his care with dedication.
Soldiers of the king, without the guns, how do you defy the war? War is war, not just with guns and grenades, but the true strategy. Nilakantan was known for the wisdom and tactics. It is said of him that in performing any duty, he was very faithful to the king and the king's orders. I am sure that they all must have fought the war through the name. It must have been like David fighting with the Goliath of the old. That's how the Dutch had to leave the dust. The Dutch were with guns. They came for the business and trade. They had the eye on the witches of the kingdom. The soldiers of the king fought and they won the war. They fought 23 Dutch soldiers along with their captain, Eustatius Benedictus Zeranai. They all surrendered to King Markanda Bharman. At the war, at the port of Konachal in 1741. Wow! The King Markanda Bharman and his soldiers won the battle! Great victory! Victory! Mm.
23 companions are alive. If you order them, I will present them to you. Yes. Go and bring them to me. You are right. You have spoken wisely, 
my minister. I order to be included in our army and let him be the trainer of our army. This is my command. most of the 
is our devotees. But our religion teaches that pain and sufferings are the outcome of our sins. No? Not so. That is not true. I will give you a book and you read the life of Job, one of the great children in the holy life. I love to read that book. Where is it? When can I have it? Here. It worked wonders in the life of Nila Kandan. He read the Holy Bible every day. His father, mother, and even wife were worried. But he was totally committed to the reading of the Holy Bible. He started to read, pray, and meditate daily the word of God. God worked wonder in him. He got a great desire to become the follower of Jesus. You 
can go to him. His name is Giovanni Battista Buttari, a Jesuit priest, and he will baptize you. Jackie, how come the man was knowing the priest? The missionaries were coming those days to preach and proclaim the gospel along with the traders. They were part of the East India Company. Then I knew the Jesuit priest, Father Johnny Batista Gutari, a Jesuit priest. My dear, why don't you tell the children how the Mathaya was baptized. As it is recorded, after getting clear instruction from Dilanai, Nithyanda went straight to the Jesuit father, the priest in that far place, warmly welcomed Nithyanda and taught more about the Christian faith and then baptized Nilu and gave him a new name. And that day onwards, he was known as Lazarus, which means, God is my help. In his mother tongue called Devan Sahayam. Oh, he makes his son rise on the evil. 
on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. God has made all of us in his own image and likeness. Then why this discrimination among us is high and low, rich and poor? Why are we divided as Dalits and Brahmins? My dear brothers and sisters, there is only one God and one Father of us all in all that is seen and unseen. He created it and we are set in What kind of meeting is it? Why are you instigating these people against your own religion? My brother, I am not instigating anyone. I am just proclaiming the truth. Nilakanda, you are not proclaiming the truth, but destroying our tradition and our religion. Brother, you too are also in living in God. You must seek the truth, and the truth will set you free. Nirakanya, stop speaking against our tradition and practices. You will have to pay the consequences. <laughs> I would like you to accept the honor. 
only God who says, come and see how sweet I am. No, how gentle and meek am I. Daddy, the beggar was very cunning and cruel too. My dear children, the discipleship of Jesus is very demanding. It calls us to give up, give up the very dear self and follow him. Jesus said, having put his hand to the plow and looks back is built for the kingdom of God. God's ways are beyond compare praying. The Valkyrie was out of it. For him to live was Christ and to die was gain to live. He was totally immersed in the love of the crucified. At the baptism, he experienced great 
dormant. At the blood, on the blood of the crucified Jesus. Never to return. No turning back. No turning back. Yeah. 
my household. Jesus and the word of God suffice. If you do not stop your madness and fall on this evil, be prepared for the consequences. Now, your majesty, whether I live or die, all I yearn is Christ and Him alone. To Him I belong. When it is us, you all are the time to deserve Him from this matter. We should be present in Him. started to move into the forest to listen and get healed. Many were cured and healed of their diseases. There was a higher mingled with people of all time, caste and status. He disregarded the caste distinction, threw away the high caste, and he lived with people of low birth. People must have been angry with the king. The king on the other side must have been roaring like the lion. The king was incited against the Christian. He had Devasahayam arrested on 23rd February 1749. And they all subjected all the tortures from the soldiers. But Devasahayam was like a lamb led to the slaughterhouse, praying and crying for Lord's mercy. Enough! Enough with Caesar! Commander and soldiers, in the hearing of all the people, Bike the person here. Take Nelata, who pledged to be Nelata, be taken to the nearby forest, where the little river flows. Kick the spring up for that moment! And shoot all the rest! And kill him! Finish the group!
He was paraded, seated on babios from village to village with sounds of insults. And on 14 January, little before the midnight hour, was taken to the forest. There he knelt and prayed. Then, at midnight between 14th and 15th January 1752, he was shot dead by the soldiers with five leaden bullets. Go oh, to those five soldiers. Let all know the bruises of the skulls with wounds on the body. Wounds of fears that the king has given time opportunity to return to his faith. The five bullets found on his body May they be fools, the faithful, all who follow him, as he followed his content master, whom he called Jesus. Take the message of Peter and do everything. Finish him to death. Oh, Jesus, you have said that he who lays down his life for me will receive it. I am ready to die for you. Accept my life and forgive these people for they do not know what they are doing. Come on! Soldiers, in the name of our mighty king, order you. We have received financial support from different dioceses 
congregations and the institutions, we extend our sincere thanks to all. A big congratulations to the editorial board members and Arya Printing Press for their tireless efforts. I also thank the cultural department for availing the stage of the officiated. Our sincere thanks go to the honorable dignitaries who are present on the bass and for the rector for availing themselves for this occasion. Now I request for the rector to hand out the magazine, <coughs> magazine to his grace, the Christopher and other dignitaries to unveil and declare that from 2022-23 is released. We sincerely appreciate you all for your support, encouragement, and your presence in this event. Now, may I request all the dignitaries to occupy their respective seats for the next program. Thank you. We give thanks to the Lord for His good, for His love, and your forever. Respected sisters, brothers, fathers, and all the dignitaries. Good evening to one and all. It is my great privilege to propose the word of thanks. On behalf of St. Albert College, I thank each and every one of you for your gracious presence. May we thank the Almighty for His abundant blessings bestowed on us. We thank the Lord for giving us this beautiful thing, Deva of Iron. It is the Lord's blessings and kindness that brought us in our world. Heartfelt thanks are due to you, all the guests, sisters, brothers, fathers, and all the great priests, for your love, support, and your benign presence. You brought a lot of joy to our lives. Your presence tells us that our hard work was not in vain. Thank you so much for making this day a memorable and meaningful one. Thank you so much for the encouragement received through your presence. Thank you. On behalf of the First Year Theology Brothers, I express my heartfelt gratitude to all the members of the college, for the rector and all the fathers, brothers and sisters. Thank you so much for your love, kindness and support. It is you who, who helped us a lot to make this program a successful one. Thank you so much for sparing your time and giving us practice, correction, financial support and all the more for trusting us. Thank you so much. May Saint Deva Sahayam, the pearl from the Indian Ocean, intercede and bless us all. May God bless us all. Thank you so much. Thank you.